that you're seeing, these are capillaries for small blood vessels that are cut lengthwise. The smaller white lines that you see in here are the white spaces. Those would be smaller vessels or more likely capillaries in here. Um, what you want to look for are the islets. The islets are the endocrine cells. And there aren't going to be a lot of islets, but what you're looking for are a group of cells amidst all of these acinar cells that are clumped together and stained lighter. So they usually stain a lighter pink color. And usually the islets are going to have a lot of capillaries in them or right around them because that's where the hormones are going to go, are into those blood vessels. So this group of cells right here, these are islets. This is an islet. So in that group of cells right here would be alpha and beta cells, cells that are making, alpha cells are making glucagon, beta cells are making insulin. And you can see this islet here has a lot of like white, looks like white space in it. And those are just capillaries that are running through and around the islet. Then you'll also see ducts. So these round guys, generally lined with simple cuboidal epithelia, those would just be your pancreatic ducts. So all of the digestive enzymes would get exocytosed into these ducts, and they would all converge to form one big pancreatic duct that then went over to the small intestine. So acinar cells or acini cells, these lighter areas are your islets. Inside of them are alpha and beta cells. You can't tell the difference between the two. It's too hard to tell. But just know that alpha and beta cells are making glucagon and insulin. If we magnify this, so again, this is a 4x. If we would go up to 10x, this is a good magnification too. You should still be able to see this is your eyelids. It's a group of cells that are staining a little bit lighter than these other cells out here. And you can see that there are capillaries running around it and then within it. So this would be the islet that we were just looking at. Out here would be your acinar or your acini cells. Okay. And those are probably going up higher in magnification. Then you're going to start to have a hard time seeing the difference between islets and the acinar cells. So 4x, 10x would be the best to see that difference. And if we go over to the adrenal gland, and I generally think the adrenal gland is one of the harder slides, and I think it's harder just because it's challenging to see the different cell types, particularly magnifying them like this. You lose a lot of the definition that you can see with your microscope. But when you look at the adrenal gland, so this would be at 4x, again, what I try to do is just get a sense of where's the capsule, where's the medulla. So out here, this, all of this stuff out here is the capsule, it's all part of the capsule, and so is these, kind of looks like strings running in this direction. That's all part of the capsule, which is just dense connective tissue surrounding the whole organ. And then you can kind of see there's a layer of cells that are running about the width of my hand right here. And that's the layer of cells that's right below the capsule. And that's your zona glomerulosa. And again, you kind of lose the definition here projecting it. But when you look, to me, those cells kind of look like they're kind of swirling a little bit like this. Kind of like that. Here you can definitely see them kind of moving in that direction. But the layer that's right under the capsule, that's zona glomerulosa, that's the layer that's releasing your mineral corticoids like aldosterone. And then you go into the next layer that's going from about here down to about here. 
That's your zona fasciculata. And these cells are kind of running like this. It's definitely going to be your biggest layer. And again, I use the capsule and the medulla as point of reference. The cells right below the capsule are glomerulosa. The cells right above or on either side of the medulla are reticularis, which we can't see here. And then this big group of cells would be fasciculata. So if I showed you that, <clears throat> and if I put the pointer right here, then that would be glomerulosa. If I put the pointer out here, that would be the capsule. If I put the pointer kind of right in the middle here, that would be fasciculata. So now I'm gonna go down, and fasciculata releases the glucocorticoids like cortisol. So I'm gonna keep going down. Here you can see the medulla. So this area that looks more purple, this is all the medulla right here. That's all the medulla. And again, the layer of cells on either side of the medulla, so that would be these cells right here, this is reticularis. And when you look at these cells, again, it's not a real big thick layer. Glomerulosa is going to be the smallest layer. Then reticularis is a little bit bigger than that. Vesiculata is the biggest layer. But when you look at this layer, you should definitely see a color switch between these that are pinker, these that are more purple. And the other thing about reticularis is the cells are kind of going out at angles a little bit instead of running straight up and down or being kind of swirly they kind of radiate out a little bit, and reticularis is gonna have more spaces in 